My name is Mike and this is the home of guns and horsepower. Thanks for joining me for this video where I changed the front brakes on my 2010 Porsche Panamera S. Now the reason I'm changing the brakes on it, for one, the rear brakes are the originals and they're getting pretty worn, it's time to replace them. The front brakes have been replaced once before when I first got the car. I replaced them with some cheap aftermarket brakes and they just didn't last. They're warped and the steering wheel wobbles when you brake at a high speed. So I figured it'd be nice to finally once have new brakes all the way around the car. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and start the project now. I've ordered up the brakes, so let's go ahead and get started. The brake parts have arrived. Let's take a look at what we got. Well, here's all the brake parts. Everything's out of the box. Everything's here. We got all the stuff to do the front and the rears. Uh, we've got rotors, brake pads, caliper bolts, and wear sensors. These are the ones that I did a little research and determined are the same as the OEM Porsche parts at a fraction of the cost. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at them. There you have it. Wait for the Harley to go by so you can hear me. All right, very nice, very nice. Well, there you have it. Um, went ahead and got everything out, inspected it closely. Parts look good, look just like the OEM originals. Got everything here to do the front and rear. Now it's time to get the job done. Cold start on the Porsche Panamera. cleaned up now I'm ready to do the front brakes um, the reason I washed it was uh, it hadn't been washed in a long time it was really dirty and I wanted to get a lot of that uh, brake dust off of there and I thought the best way to start is to start with the water so I went ahead and washed the whole car uh, ended up clay barring it and waxing it and hadn't been done in a long time so now that everything's washed and ready let's go ahead and uh, disassemble Brembo calipers, there's no way to take them apart. They are one monoblock caliper. Let me go ahead and give you a close up of that. All right, now that I got the wheel off, I'll give you a closer look at the caliper here. As you can see, it's not like most Brembos where this is an open part and the pads come out after removing, uh, I think, a pin. And you can see as they're in there, this is one solid block. There's no way to disassemble the caliper. So you got the one bolt right here and then the other bolt right there at the bottom. So once you get those two bolts, you can walk the caliper off and then we can get the rotor off. So um, next step is to remove this and then get it supported up in the car. One massive caliper. Heavy and heavy. Doesn't want to stay put. Definitely gonna have a hard time zip tying that thing up, it's heavy. All right, there's the old rotor. The reason I'm changing these is these are some cheap aftermarkets, some Q1 concepts or something. They seemed highly rated, they seemed like they'd be functional, but they're really some cheap junk. They went ended up uh, warping on me right away. Now I gotta work on getting the caliper supported a bit better so I can get this all cleaned up. Then we'll uh, discuss changing out the pads. There you go, I got the caliper propped up. Um, typically I would zip tie it to like the A-arm, but like I said, 
this thing is heavy. It's going to snap zip ties or just hang so bad. So I went ahead and uh, made a little stand for it. Got it secured up. So now let's go ahead and get everything cleaned up. These high performance brakes definitely generate a lot of dust. Um, contrary to what I always believed, I thought it was from the pads, but after watching the PCA, they had a um, streaming video where they talked to a brake expert and they said, no, the dust comes from the rotors. Uh -huh, who knew? But uh, so basically you're just grinding your rotors away with each time you step on it and that's where all this mess comes from. Now that you've got everything off and we're getting it cleaned up, it's a good idea to kind of inspect things. You know, it's time to check your, your wheel bearing there, make sure there's no play. Take a look around, see if any of the bushings are um, cracked or, um, or even broken. But uh, everything looks pretty good in here, just a little dirty. Okay, before I put the... Um, new rotor on I'm gonna go ahead and work on changing out the caliper or the pads right now in the caliper since I'll have more room without the disc being there so let me head and go ahead and get you a closer look of how that looks inside here we go I got the showing you a close-up of the inside of the caliper with the pads it's a pretty straightforward um, removal and reinstallation I just have one tip um, what I always have done to open up the the calipers to accept the new thicker pads I've always left the old ones in and went ahead and just squeezed on those I know people use a C clamp and this one's a six piston so you got three pistons on this side and three on this side so to be able to press them evenly I just use the old pads since I'm not gonna uh, reuse them so that's what I use to open it up I use a um, just a large uh, see here channel lock like this and put a piece of wood on the back side here to protect from scratching the caliper and go ahead and squeeze those open. I'm not replacing the hardware, which if you can see, see I get something to point at, point at it. You can see right here, this is one of the hardware clips. This is what applies the tension and keeps the pads locked in place. There's one down here as well. Can't really get, there's not much light. You can see like the top of it there. Now those um, are extremely firm. Uh, it's only recommended that you replace them. It's not required when you do the brake job. And since they're very firm, I'm going to give you a little tip that I learned. Um, don't take out both pads at the same time. When you get to the point where you're after you spread them, spread the calipers all the way open, go ahead and remove just one pad and then change that with the new one and then swap out, then swap out the other side. Click clips in place and it'll make it a lot easier for you. So let's go ahead and uh, do that next. I started pulling the pad out and I totally forgot about the wear sensors. So I went ahead over here and unplugged it. Um, took me a little while to kind of figure out how the plug released, but uh, if you slide a screwdriver into this part and look on the back side, the other connector, there's a little tab. You just press up and they pull right apart. One other thing I wanted to show you is the brake line to the caliper, like I said, doesn't offer a lot of slack. So what you want to do is right here, let me get my finger, and right here, there's a clip prop that out and then you can work the the brake line out and it gives you more uh, room so that definitely makes it a lot easier so now that I got that free I can go ahead and get the pads out um, but like I said I definitely forgot about the, the the wear sensors there so like I said the pads loose but it's still attached to the sensor so I'll go ahead and get those out and I'll show you how that goes all right, so what I decided to do, I was kind of fiddling with the sensors for a little while because, uh, like I said, the brake line on the calipers uh, doesn't have a lot of slack. Even after release, uh, releasing that clip, I can't get the caliper like turned around so I can work with this back, this face, 
facing me. So what I did is I went ahead and just bolted it back up to the spindle and that allowed me to play back here and get the clips out so I can get the, the pad with the wear sensor. So I went ahead and disconnected the wear sensors. So now it's just uh, simply uh, swapping out the pads. You can see in there, it's hard to get the light that I need right where I want it so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So like I said, I took the one pad out, left, got the wear sensor disconnected. It's pretty simple. They, uh, whoa, way too close. It's got these little metal things right here and that's the tensioners. And you pull on that and then these things slide out of the pad. Sometimes they can be stuck in there if they've been in there a long time. Now this wear sensor here, it's not in bad shape, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and replace everything. Now I got the new pads here. I just want to make sure, I'm pretty sure they're all identical. All four pads are identical. There's no in, outside, left, right. All the numbers are identical on them. Yeah, everything looks good. The pads rest or slide. There's holes in the pads on these little pins here. There's another one up here at the top here. There you go, right there. So uh, you need to grease those up a little bit. Some brake pad sets come with the grease, others don't. So this is what I got here. It's a Permatex uh, brake parts lubricant. It's a ceramic extreme. So I'll go ahead and clean those up and then lube those as well before I install the new pads. put some on the backing plate here but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead since it's the three pistons they're only gonna mark only gonna grab this in certain spots so I'm gonna put it directly on the piston surface so it lines up just right you don't want to put a lot of grease either just enough to get the job done you don't want to make a mess Sensors fed properly. There we go. That's why I had trouble. Okay. The other pad out. That was much easier than the first one. Very important to make sure you get the bolts to line up right at the bottom. Get the bottom one lined up and then support it so you don't have tension on the threads while you're threading it in. All right, well there you have it. There's the finished product on the right side, passenger side. Everything went smoothly. It looks great. All that's left to do is uh, torque the two caliper bolts. All right, like I said, the fasteners on these are one-time use only. And that's because of once you torque them down, I guess they stretch a little bit. I've read online you can use them again as long as you're not using them in a racing um, sort of context on a regular basis. But um, they're only about $4 a bolt, so I'm going to go ahead. I always replace them. Um, go ahead and torque them down. I just finger tightened them, so now I'm going to go ahead and, and tight with that. 
spun everything everything went good wear sensors installed pads are installed everything's cleaned up it looks great under here got the pads uh, wear sensors installed everything went pretty smoothly like I said the only difficult part really with this brake job is um, dealing with the caliper the caliper is very heavy um, like I said there's not a lot of slack in the brake line I've seen instructions where they tell you to remove the brake line I don't want to bleed the brakes I just had the brake fluid flush not too long ago so there's no need to really do that I just want to make an extra mess and a step for myself but that's kind of the biggest thing with this is working with this big monoblock caliper all right let's go ahead and get this torqued up I checked online it says 103 foot pounds for the front caliper bolts 63 foot pounds for the rear so let's go ahead and get this dialed in All right, there you go. We got the front calipers torqued down. The whole brake job's done on the right side here. Let's go ahead and move over and uh, do the left side. So what I've done so far is I removed the caliper bolts, which have a little bit of an unusual head. It's called, uh, let's see, what's the socket called here? It's called an M14. So kind of like a Torx, but it has more teeth. When I originally did the brakes on this, the bolt had an external Torx head, so a different head altogether. But Porsche, I guess, does this from time to time. They redesign the fasteners. So this is what the caliper bolt looks like today if you buy it. And this is the socket. It's called an M14. So I went ahead and removed the caliper. And after that, I took off the rotor. It's simply just uh, two uh, Phillips head screws that retain it in. And then now I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up. And then we'll get to changing the pads out. want to get everything prepped up nice cleaned up a uh, little WD-40 on everything just so we don't have any corrosion buildup or so, uh, seizing or even um, bonding of the metals so just trying to get everything cleaned up and uh, start fresh go ahead and uh, take that clip out of the brake line so I can go ahead and get a little bit more slack Okay, I got the caliper off, got the rotor off, got the hub cleaned up, got a little bit of the caliper cleaned, now we're going to go ahead and change the pads. And I'm not changing the hardware because the hardware is extremely firm, it's only a recommended item, it's not necessary. So at this point I don't feel it's necessary, the car is 41,000 miles, I don't feel it's uh, time to change the hardware. And basically all the hardware is is those two clips that apply the tension that, uh, to the pads. So what I typically use is a large channel lock. I'm going to put a little piece of wood on the other side so I don't damage the caliper. And then I'm going to go ahead and spread the, um, the pistons open. It's just as simple as that. If you take out one pad at a time and replace it with a new one, you don't have to fight with the hardware. They're pretty easy to snap in. Other than having to uh, remove the um, 
the wear sensors, it's a pretty easy uh, brake job. The wear sensors can get stuck in the pads. It takes a little bit of wiggling, the pliers, and then a screwdriver to get them out. Just be patient, they'll come out. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a pretty straightforward job. So there you have it. There's how you change the front uh, brake pads and rotors on a 2010 Porsche Panamera S. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Uh, please browse the channel and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, if you get stuck on anything, I'm more than willing to help you out. Thanks again for watching.